Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to our fall virtual open house 2020. I'm here with our coordinator of the Motive Power Technician Program, Eric, who's going to do a little presentation for you going over all of the things that uh, Motive Power brings. And uh, at the end of the presentation, we'll also have some time to do a Q&A. Um, so be sure to throw some questions in the question box uh, during the presentation so we can have all these questions answered for you. For the duration of the presentation, your mics and webcam will be turned off. Uh, so utilize that chat function or the question function. Um, any prevalent information that Eric goes through during the presentation, I'll also throw in the chat box, uh, emails, websites, links, or anything to that extent. So you can keep an eye out on that chat as well. Uh, but I'd like to welcome you. Um, thanks so much for joining us. And I'm gonna throw it over to Eric, the coordinator of Motor pa Motor Power Technician. Thanks, Josh. Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Motive Power Technician Program. Uh, one of the old, oldest programs, actually, at Fanshawe College is the Motive Power Technician Program. It's been around pretty much since um, the college actually opened, uh, either in an apprenticeship form or a post-secondary form, and it's been around for a really long time. It's one, one, of, the, uh, one of the stalemates at the college, for sure. Um, like Josh said, um, my name is uh, Eric McElwain. That on my screen there, and Josh is, I know, is going to share that with you. My technical job is the program coordinator for um, the Motive Power Automotive, which is the MTA program, and the MTD, which is Motive Powered uh, Diesel Technician program. Uh, we've had over the years a number of remakes of the program and uh, different ways of delivering the program. We've started off at um, 18 week semesters, then we went to a 16 week semester, now we're at a 15 week semester. Um, so the digit on the end, the seven, it represents um, the addition number of the program that we are at. And now we are going to be moving forward come September of 2021. We're going to be moving into what is known as a co-op program. So that's going to be a number MTA8 and MTD8 and 9 program. So um, just so everyone is aware, if you have any uh, real information that you're, you're looking for in an extension of this presentation, um, there's an email address right there, which is myfuture at fanshawc.ca. Um, you can... Um, Technically, they will send their questions towards me. That's kind of a fail-safe sort of email box, and they will send those questions towards me, and I end up usually emailing. So if you miss, miss my email, there's another one that you can get to right away as well, just so everyone knows. Now, um, uh, the CAT building, um, the Center for Applied Transportation Technologies, uh, we are located just off of the main campus at uh, Fanshawe. Uh, we had this building constructed and finished May of 2011. This is kind of our front entrance into the college. Um, we're at 1764 Oxford Street, which is about a three or four minute walk from main campus on, on a good summer day for sure. Um, our building was kind of um, a step towards what they were considering to be a clean energy program when it first started. We have um, um, we received a number of different grants from both the province and the federal government, as well as uh, Fanshawe funding and exterior funding. It holds uh, all of the programs that are related to any form of transportation. So if you're looking for an automotive or a truck uh, apprenticeship program, an auto body apprenticeship program, uh, a post-secondary program, uh, uh, pre-technology program. They are all based out of what is known as the CAT building. Um, we have um, we have enough room in our in our building for about 1,500 students, and on an average, um, this year we have about 400 motive power students that we are um, uh, housing, both in the first year, which is a common, and the second year auto and the second year diesel. So we have lots of um, 
lots of avenues and lots of different things all happening at the CAT building all the time. Our facility was uh, one of those kind of early sort of green roof sort of technologies that we were using. Um, it was um, it was a real step forward. We reclaim all of the all of the um, all of the water from the roof, and we take that and we use that for uh, washrooms and toilets, and um, we treat it. We use solar lights if you can see really really close down here with my little bit of an arrow we kind of have a um, solar tracking light that provides light into our building so we can use an awful lot less hydro we use low emission uh, or low emissive windows so that keeps the heat out of our building as much as much as possible only certain portions of our building are air conditioned so we're very very environmentally friendly as our building, which was kind of a an, an initial step, and which is why we received so much funding from the province as well as the feds. At the time, everybody thought that was the world's greatest idea, and it's a fabulous building. Like even if you don't come and take the motor power program, um, please take a walk through it. Um, you'll see that it's quite an amazing piece of machinery for sure. Now, what is this program all about? This program is all about um, automotive and uh, commercial truck applications that um, um, fall in line with the Ministry of Transportation and colleges and universities, as well as the Ontario College of Trades for automotive truck and coach repair programs. Portions of this program also deal with marketing. So you get uh, a couple of marketing classes. You get um, a gen ed course in the, um, in the second year of the program, um, as well as a couple of service management and um, uh, programs that prepare you for um, dealership ownership, um, repair station ownership, if that was the avenue that you wanted to go. Um, They've been doing this um, additional portion of this program um, for a number of years now. And we, uh, the gentleman that delivers that course always brings in people from uh, Penske and uh, we have Volkswagen, uh, Daimler Chrysler, Audi, BMW representatives all coming in and talking about service management, the types of styles and avenues of which um, Everybody does something a little bit different. Um, BMW has a service procedure that needs to be followed this way. Volkswagen has one that needs to be followed this way. And that's what they're always passing along. So all of the information that all of our students are getting are, um, it's the most up to date and current at that particular point in time. Now, what we would be studying and why are you gonna be studying? Well, we have to cover, according to um, colleges and universities, we have to, um, deliver all three levels of what is known as the apprenticeship program. The apprenticeship program is divided for transportation into two separate sectors for us, for what we are delivering in our program. We have the automotive side, and then we have the commercial truck and coach repair technician program. Typically, the first year is realistically the same for all programs. So, our first year is common all the way across the board. So it doesn't matter if you start um, the program in September or you start the program in January or you start the program in May. Um, any one of those, everyone's going to start off at the same point in time and then they're going to progress level by level, not year by year, but level by level. So you could start in September of 21, um, 2021 or in January of 2022. Um, each one of those would be offered as level one programs in the first year. So first year programs consist of level one and level two. Year two consists of level three and level four. If you go on and get a dual diploma, well, then you end up learning um, level five and level six, which is really kind of a cool. What's this program directed towards? People always ask. 
when I'm done this program, what is it that I could be able to do? Well, first and foremost, most people from our program typically move towards uh, some form of an apprenticeship, whether or not it's in the automotive industry or the truck and coach. So that's why it's a 310S or 310T. S is automotive, T is truck. That's probably the most common. I would say most likely about 50% of our graduates want to move towards that. Um, a number of students that have left our program have gone to become service technicians. And then after that point in time, they end up taking on a, a foreman's job where they get to decide which service tech gets to do what particular job and um, why you would select that particular person. Other ones go on and they work the service counter where the customer brings in their vehicle and says, hey, I've got a problem with this. So they ask the appropriate questions, fill in all the information, and then they take that information and they give it off to the, um, to the four person. Other people end up going off and being service and or parts managers, to be honest with you. Uh, we have had a number of each over the last number of years, service manager, parts manager, uh, district parts and service managers, which means that you could be um, service manager for Chrysler, as an example, um, for Southwestern Ontario, where there's 18 Chrysler dealerships between here and Windsor, something along that line. Service writing, um, where you receive a customer, um, take down their information, um, and move them along to the next particular desk. Some people go off and do in insurance adjusting, which is quite a unique little uh, portion. You do estimating. Um, you could um, take a have a look and say, okay, well, this vehicle, uh, the all four airbags went off in this, so we're probably not going to be repairing this particular type of vehicle. Uh, but that's kind of a cool sort of sort of one that um, um, a number of students have gone to over the last ten years, and I've seen. And then um, we've had people that have left our program, became that service technician, and they've purchased. It service garages around town and they repair them and now we have a couple of them um, that uh, have graduated from our program have become owners and now they're coming back to school to even teach because they've covered pretty much every single a um, asset of our program um, they're a great asset to what's happening with all of um, all of the industry they can they're up on the latest technologies. They've seen pretty much everything, and now they're coming back and partaking their information to our students, which is probably the greatest thing. Now, as it sits at this particular point in time, so if you started in um, September of 2020 or you're going to start in January of 2021, you would be enrolled in what is known as the MTA7 or MTD7 program. If you are going to apply at a later date, September of 2021, January 2022, or May of 2022, you would have the ability to be enrolled in an MTA and an MTD8 program, or an MTA and a, or an MTD9 program. Now, what are the differences there? The differences are this, the MTA, um, nine program is going to be our co-op, which is one that uh, we have had uh, a few times. Uh, it was called a number of different programs, but now Fanshawe is actually integrating that into ours. Um, it used to be a provincially run program. Now it's going to be a Fanshawe run program. Uh, and that commences September of 2021. The MTA8 and MTD8, are going to be the ones that are affiliated with that particular program and this is how this works so uh, the mta or mtd9 program which has a co-op you do that over uh, a span of an entire two years that's how long that particular program takes um, the mta mtd8 program well on top of 
the MTA program, we can take and we can put you back in and get you a dual diploma, which means that um, you will have to complete the five main core courses. And at the same time, you can end up having um, a, a co-op in so if you graduated the A program, the automotive, um, then you could come back, do all the diesel courses, and then complete a co-op at the end of that, and you will be co-op endorsed with a dual diploma at the end of that after a span of three full years. So um, there's lots of door openings, and there's lots of different avenues that you can go over that particular time frame. At the same time, um, we still offer the MTA7 and MTD7 programs, and those are the ones that are not co-op endorsed. So uh, we've effectively opened uh, a total of four more doors of availability by adding a co-op into our program, which is a huge leap forward for our industry because a number of increasing shops are asking for students to have dual diplomas. So you might be in a you might be in a trucking coach place uh, repairing vehicles and uh, a car comes in and they don't want to turn that vehicle away and they say, well, who's got the ability to be able to do that? So you put your hand up and say, hey, I have both. I can do both. So as for delivery of this program, uh, this program uh, is common across all first-year levels, no matter which way it starts, whether or not you start in September, May, or, or January. Um, you will start off with one particular subject and you will build up towards another series of subjects all the way across until you have completed the first year. At the end of the first year, presuming that you have um, passed all of the uh, required courses, you move on to the second year of the program. And the second year is where you begin to specialize on whether or not you're working in the automotive industry or the truck and coach industry. So our curriculum is all based on, um, first off, we have additional time in our program as opposed to the apprenticeship program. Um, which means that you could almost uh, almost double the amount of material in in that particular time frame. Um, so there's an enormous amount of reinforcement. Typically, if we have a student that takes the two-year technician program and they move on to the um, uh, apprenticeship program, whether or not they Ha they end up doing all three levels or if they just if they write an exemption for level one and level two and they simply go to level three our mode of power technician programs are the top of the class they are the top one or two students in the entire program um, solely because of reinforcement the number of times that everyone has received it um, you've seen it you know what you're up against you know why you're up against it so you have all of the answers and the repetition is key in our industry. So if you do anything more three or more times, um, it becomes uh, the ease at which we accept that kind of material it makes our job so much easier. And that that really is proof. And that's one of the biggest compliments of what happens with our students when they go uh, when they end up going to an apprenticeship or building ownership whatever way you want to see that. Now, graduation requirements. Graduation requirements, 50% um, of your mark equals a course credit. However, that does not provide graduation for a uh, particular program. Over um, the entire span, we need a letter grade of C in each one of your courses or an averaging of a C across all of your courses. Some some courses work where they have uh, more available credits um, and there are other courses that have less available credits. So um, we're looking for a, a GPA uh, of 2.0, which it equates out to about 60% all the way across on average courses. So if you have one where you um, 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 
alternative fuels course, as an example, has a two-hour theory and a two-hour lab every week, where first-year electrical class has a four-hour theory and a four-hour lab every week. So um, an equivalent of um, a B in one course, electrical, is much has much greater value than, say, a D in um, alternative fuel courses. So that B from first year electrical class will bring your grade point average up. That's the one that always helps you out. Now, um, it doesn't always work out that way. Um, sometimes it goes in reverse, but um, typically we're looking for about a 60% passing grade for each particular course that uh, everyone is attending. Now, graduation credentials. Our MTA and our MTD program, um, it is requirement of Fanshawe College to be able to meet and exceed the minimum requirements for the two-year diploma program through the college's ministry of training, colleges and universities. We have to deliver all of the materials for uh, level one, level two and level three for automotive if you're in the MTA program. And we are a requirement of level one, level two, and level three in the truck and coach service technician program as well. That is, a, we become audited about every four years to be able to make sure that we are actually delivering the material based on what the Ministry of Training and Colleges and Universities and the Ontario College of Trades is requiring of us. So, additional credits. So, since the first year is common across all individual programs, you can return back for the second year, um, a total of two semesters, and graduate from the opposite program, equating out to a double diploma. That double diploma actually opens about twice as many doors as just having a singular diploma. It's amazing the number of people that are um, service related that require or would really really want to have people that have the double diploma um, it looks um, from an employer's point of view it's like wow i've got two guys that have a double diploma and another couple of guys would say hey well i have four double diplomas so those are the kind of things that um, really end up being the feather in your cap because when you look at the industry now there's a huge shortage of service technicians. That huge shortage of service technicians, well, that means, well, you could hire pretty much anybody. That's really, really true. The idea is, what are you offering an employer that nobody else has? In the grand scheme of things, when you think about it, um, one year additional at school is almost absolutely nothing in the full picture of your entire life. One additional year, it's eight months, um, makes a huge difference. At the end of the day, um, that opens up probably twice as many doors as you ever seem to think that you possibly could. Um, working in the trucking industry, um, I, of which I have done both, car and truck, um, Sometimes those truck tires get get a little heavy after after a period of time. So, um, although when I was younger, I was most definitely working on the in the in the trucking industry, and then um, after I hit about 30 or 35 years old, I thought, well, I'm going to move myself to the automotive, and I was still licensed for it, um, and I've been that way ever since, kind of um, sitting in the automotive side. I still work every single summer, um, only because I want to make sure that I get up keep myself up to date for um, teaching and programming and coordinator and all of these kinds of things. Now, what is required of you? Um, we, uh, the requirements for English and math and those things, that's all set out by, by the college. For what you need for our particular program, you need safety equipment, which is a set of steel toe boots, and they have to have that green patch that's on it, as you can see right there. They are, uh, that's CSA approved. You need a set of safety glasses with permanently affixed side shields. Now you notice that I highlighted the yellow um, where it says permanently affixed um, because some 
people have a tendency to put on clipped on side rail glasses they actually have to be permanently affixed so if you're wearing a pair of glasses either you have to find a pair that fits over top and they can't be goggles they actually have to be safety glass um, or you have to get a pair of prescription ones and they're not exactly the cheapest um, as for uniform we have um, a shop coat that is a requirement for our program it says school of transportation technology at fanshawe college it's navy blue it's a button front typically people end up asking me well can i pair wear a pair of um, coveralls and my answer to that question is no you actually have to be uh, dressed in our attire as required um, shop coats are much easier in the event of something happening we can rip, rip it off significantly faster than we could if it was a pair of uh, coveralls and that's always one particular question uh, textbooks textbooks and supplies are listed on the um, college website whenever that uh, system goes live we have an electronic textbook um, as well as a paper textbook um, that that's available the electronic textbook that we have this year it's a new offering also has additional online learning at aspects that was not available in this particular textbook before which is a huge leap forward in today's technology let's face it if it's not online nobody's going to take a look at it so now that they have availability to that our courses are um, adding additional learning avenues by the use of a laptop you can even use it by your phone which is a really great thing um, as long as you have a username and a password that you get from your instructor when you open up that particular piece now what are we supplying on our end of the deal only makes sense you have to do something we need to do something we supply all of the hand tools power tools and air tools that you're going to need to be able to complete any aspect that we are going to be asking you to do we have all the required specialty tools we have um, in the last three years we have um, received additional uh, apprenticeship enhancement funding from the uh, provincial government that has uh, allowed us to purchase all brand new toolboxes throughout our entire building uh, both in the automotive and the truck and uh, the auto body side the farm side will be getting something a little bit different over the next couple of years as well as all the digital versions of um, all data uh, mitchell's gm service training uh, dodge service training we have hyundai service training we have toyota uh, service training we have all those sorts of links that are on um, on our computer system and they are available to all the students to be able to use them anytime that they are in Z building. Um, as long as you have a username and a password to get onto it, you're okay. As well as um, all vehicles that are um, required to be able to complete the task that we are asking of you. Um, each one will be providing every student with a uh, a lab package that says okay so for lab number one which is like week one or week two uh, this is the requirement that you will be completing um, the instructor will be standing there giving you a hand we take and we do a little bit of work and away we go and um, completed the job completed the task handed in all the assignments and you end up with your first mark that's pretty much how that particular avenue goes so for the program breakdown, in the first year, we have a total of about 16 courses that are run over um, a span of eight months. So we have about eight in the first level and eight in the second level. That's, that's year one. There's a total of six core and six truck and coach tr trade specific theory classes. That's how all that works out, okay? Um, as well there will be um, um, applied mathematics which is uh, math 1162 is the course code that's available as well as um, writ which uh, which has an availability to have a um, an exemption by completing the writ assessment on time 
And there will also be six core automotive and truck trade specific hands-on lab courses that correspond with the um, um, six core automotive and truck trade specific theory classes. So um, each one of those courses has a different length, has um, a different credit value. Um, if you have four hours of theory a week, well, that particular course is worth a total of four credits for you. Um, if you have, if it's a three hour lab, well, that three hour lab works out to one and a half course credits um, because the theory portion is more valuable um, for an understanding in your basic first year programs um, than the lab aspect of it solely because the exam, the culminating exam at the end of all of this is um, based on what happens in your theory courses, not in your lab courses. The four additional courses um, are math. Um, there are two marketing courses, one solely in the first year, and then grit and skills for success or strategies for success is, is that one specific course that um, tells, that lets you know how to sell yourself to an employer. It's a fabulous course for that. In the second year, we have a total of 19 courses. Now, a majority of these are all core courses with a few additional add-ons. So there are seven core automotive or trucking coach specific theory courses, okay? So that means there'll be seven corresponding automotive or truck and coach trade specific hands-on lab courses. So there you go. So there's 14 of the 19, and then you have five additional courses. One is vehicle dynamics, which is a measurement of mathematics for um, ride height adjustment, roll center, all those forms of measurements. If you're into any form of racing, whether or not it's on-road or off-road, um, that vehicle dynamics course is specifically de designed towards that, and that's um, that's kind of looking at things from an engineering point of view. Then we have communication courses, um, a communication course, a general elective, and two management courses. Now, the two management courses are split um, in one semester, um, half of it being delivered in, um, in this semester, half of it being delivered over seven weeks, and the other portion of it being delivered over six, because this year's semesters just happen to be 13 weeks instead of 15 weeks solely due to changes. As for class sizes, typically our theory classes are going to have about 60 to 80 students in them as an average, um, which is an outrageous size. Um, we have one particular classroom that will hold, um, I think about 125 students, but we don't typically use that one. We, uh, we use that classroom for testing more than we use it for anything else. Now, um, when you look at the lit, um, the lab aspect of it, well, you certainly wouldn't want to be in the lab classroom um, with about 60 or 80 other students. The, those numbers are typically down to about 16 to 18 students per section. So um, if you take and you have a look and you say, okay, well, 18 students and I have um, 60 in my theory course, so you're, you take your theory course, divide it into three, and then then you would have your three lab sections that correspond with that. Or if you have your 80, well, then you're you're going to take and you're going to divide that into eight. Um, sorry, you're going to divide that into five sections based on those 80 students to keep the numbers down in the lab. And we have significantly less numbers of students in the lab than we do in the lecture. Lectures are so much easier to control. But when people are working hands-on and they are trying to um, grasp a concept, it's so much easier to work with less less numbers in the lab than there are when they're in theory classes. Now, our faculty, oh my goodness, our faculty. Our faculty have been around for, uh, all of our faculty have had at least a minimum of five years of work experience. Most of us have had more. Um, of licensed service technicians. So if it takes you um, three years to complete um, the apprenticeship portion, 
Well, those three years don't count towards actual licensed. So that means at least you would probably have 13 years of actual hands-on, including um, your apprenticeship time. And we are all red seal endorsed, which means that um, uh, for the older ones of us, which is a guy like me, um, we were required to have um, a minimum percentage of 80% to have a red seal. Now that requirement has been moved down to uh, 70%. And um, if I take and I add all of the numbers up of all of the guys that are in our program that are teaching, we have a combined faculty, have over 420 years of licensed trade experience. I myself, well, I have, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid to say it, but I have like 30 years myself. So um, all of us have been around a long time. We have, uh, most of us are still working in the industry today. Um, two of the guys that I currently work with own their own businesses. Uh, one of them is a contractor. Um, and there are probably 15 that actively work over the summer months to be able to keep, um, keep our trade experience up. And we are required to update ourselves every year which is really great things. Now, what else do we offer? Um, if you had, uh, uh, typically we have um, a, an awful lot of peer support at, at the college. We have uh, tutors, we have mentors, we have uh, academic counseling, we have personal counseling, we have instructors that have six available hours every week to be able to help you understand basic or additional concepts, whatever way that you need to do that. Um, it, it's the great thing about all of the guys that I work with um, is the fact that just because my class ends at five o'clock at night does not mean that I'm going to be finished teaching at five o'clock at night. If you have 30 questions and I'm there until eight o'clock at night answering all of those questions, that's indeed what our guys do. Um, we have always done that. Nobody's ever walking out the door um, right at the end of the day. We are always available. We have um, Fanshawe Online. We have uh, we use um, videos to show different concepts. We use hand-to-hand. -hand, we use diagrams. Um, we'll take you and see whatever way um, you're going to be able to uh, uh, grasp the concept that we're trying to get across to you. So we have lots of different ways. Now, what else do we offer? Um, we have lots of different extracurricular activities. It's not as though you're just going to come to Fanshawe and you're going to sit there and learn. We actually get to work on a number of additional products, um, uh, packages, um, a little bit of fun time, a little bit of me time, if you want to call it. Um, we have, over the last number of years, we've probably had eight or 10 different projects that um, our division has been involved in. And um, we have built a 1967 Ford Falcon, which is um, kind of our, sort of our, our, our biggest little one. We, took it from the ground up and uh, we built it for the 50th anniversary of Fanshawe College and presented it to the president of the college. Um, we have, um, we've done over a 1932 Ford, we did a 1967 Chevrolet Impala, a 1958 Corvette, there, there was one great big project. Um, we built a 2011 Chevy Cruze for the family or Fanshawe Student Union. Um, my friend Mark has built, um, uh, Mark Russell has built a 1988 Mac midliner. Um, we've built it from the scratch. It's got a double turbocharger on it. It's got a built-in supercharger on it. It has, um, it's got line lock on an air brake system. It has traction control. It has single axle with a double drive shaft. It has all those fancy little things for sure. Um, what else do we have? We have a slalom that typically occurs in September every year. Um, we've had that probably for 14 years now where the London Slalom Club of Southwestern Ontario uh, meets 
every every Tuesday, I believe, and they come to us and they run a slalom exchange every year uh, where we offer our students a ride. Uh, if they're interested, they could run their own vehicle in it as long as it's um, as long as it's uh, passes all of the safety requirements for the slalom club. Um, then we uh, bring all of our attire off to the London Speed and uh, custom show typically every February we run that and then in September of every year except for this year by the way uh, we have a welcome back or a welcome to Fanshawe barbecue that we offer our students every single year um, it's kind of like hi come meet all of your faculty you may not be able to meet them all that fast um, some you may never see because they may teach one lab section but they may not teach your lab section that's a possibility. Some may teach you a theory class, some you may never even see, but at least you know who they are when, when they come that particular day. And um, unlike other programs um, that are offered throughout uh, the college system, the 24 colleges and the university, or colleges across Ontario, all of our courses for um, the motor power program save for one which is offered at um at main campus um they are all pretty much offered at zed building um that kind of keeps us all together as a group pretty much you we all sort of travel in packs which is kind of a nice way of saying it we're all uh, we're all together um so that way the people that are in your theory class are typically in your lab class you get to know them you get to study with them um, they become your peers and peers turn into friends friends turn into um, uh, mentors and tutors and at the end of the day by the time you graduate they're an awful lot more than acquaintance acquaintances when you first met them at Fanshawe College they've now become your friends which is really what well, the power is really all we all trying to get. So if you have any questions, there's my email address. I know Josh is going to uh, put that back up in the chat. I'm sure he always does. And um, you can email me any particular question that you like. Um, I can respond to it. Um, and um, if you get a chance to come and see um, Zed Building, please come and take a tour, even if you um, decide not even to take our program. Um, come on down. I don't, I'd don't. i love to meet anybody anytime for a tour of our building in any place, but I would prefer that you come to Motive Power. <clears throat> Thanks so, so much, Eric. That, yeah. There you go, Josh. It's all yours. Thanks. Thanks so much, Eric. That's a, a fantastic and informative presentation. And and yeah, it's it's one thing to do all this in a virtual platform now, but our, our facilities really speak for themselves at Zed Building there is a phenomenal facility um, and a great investment for our students to get that hands-on practical experience. Uh, we do have a couple of questions here. Um, one prospective student is asking about programs that start in May. So I believe the Motive Power programs, both those diploma programs start in May, correct? Yes, they do. There is, um, we have an intake that starts in September, January, and May. And the May one goes um, May until August is the first four months. And then they start again in September and go until um, until Christmas and then January until April. And then they're off until the following September. Fantastic. A uh, little bit, I'm not sure if you can answer this specifically, but some things about auto body too. There's not an intake for auto body techniques in May. Um, students were wondering the difference between the auto body and collision apprenticeship. The ABC code would be the apprenticeship and the ABT would be the one year certificate program. So that's the difference between the two. Uh, the auto body techniques doesn't have a May intake. It has a September and January intake. Um, Correct. But if you, I guess if you could, a little bit like, I guess the difference is formal techniques is going through the Ontario College certificate through Ontario Colleges to apply, whereas the apprenticeship ABC is finding your employer and sponsor, correct? That is absolutely correct, yes. And then your employer will decide when you're going to go back to school for that, um, for level one, level two, and level three of your auto body apprenticeship. 
as opposed to taking the techniques program when you actually pick your own start. Fantastic. Uh, we talked a little bit about the students in the classes though. So 80 there for theoretical, whereas the labs are much, much smaller in the 16 kind of area there. So we touched on that. Uh, in regards to the co-op that's coming September, 2021, um, are these paid positions? Uh, does the college assist students finding that or how does that work? We have a, a co-op consultant that has been assign, assigned to Motive Power. Uh, that will assist the students in trying to find a co-op. Uh, for it to be considered to be a co-op, you have to be paid in the first place. So um, one is one is a co-op and the other one is a placement. This is a co-op program. So um, now that doesn't guarantee that you are going to have a position that opens the door so you can have a position for a co-op. And there are tighter restrictions on the co-op portion as well. Um, every course, and so uh, when I was talking about the other portion, I said, well, it was an average across to get to 60%, but with a co-op, you actually have to have 60% in every course to be able to go out on a co-op. So there are tighter requirements for a co-op than there is on for graduation. Gotcha. Another just a great opportunity for students to get that hands-on experience as well. So uh, if you do have any other questions, uh, the chat box here, we're, we're looking through the question box. We're, we're keeping an eye out on that. I did put some of the email addresses, uh, Eric's email address specifically, um, coordinator Eric, for uh, any questions that you'd like to follow up with. Um, Guess kind of going through this chat box here. Is there anything else that you'd like to add, um, Eric? Kind of as we wrap up here, uh, a lot of that information was covered in the presentation, so I think that's a that, that's a really great way to kind of uh, illustrate a lot of these things. Um, no, I I I think um, probably about the only thing I'd like to say is that everyone that works in motive power is always very passionate about what they do. Um, Fanshawe has been known for years to be one of the leaders in automotive and uh, truck and coach programs and apprenticeships, as well as our post-secondary class. We, we enhance each other and we're always pushing each other to be able to make sure that we have the best available product. And that's what Motive Power does at Fanshawe. Yeah, some pretty cool projects there too that you indicated that 1967 Ford Falcon's pretty Pretty cool project that uh, students get to work on. I haven't been over to see the Corvette yet, but I'm gonna have to get over and take a look at that as well. So some, some pretty cool stuff there. Um, which it looks like our chat's kind of coming to an end here. Um, we will have these uh, sessions recorded for our students. So if anybody's uh, interested in, in, in obtaining a copy and getting some more information, we can always send that out. Um, I'm gonna finish by putting our my future at fanshawc.ca email address in the chat. So if students have any other questions regarding um, student services or student life experience or any of those other things that complement their academics, we're always available to assist with that as well. Um, let's just take a look at the chat once uh, the, sorry, the questions once more. Oh, we got some coming in here now. Fantastic. Um, is there a difference between the AST and the MTA programs? Uh, the material for the programs is is identical because it's regulated by the Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities and the Ontario College of Trades. So their material for AST is the same material that we have for post-secondary or the MTA and the MTD programs, um, except we have more additional time in the post-secondary program than they do in the apprenticeship program. Cool. Uh, a great question coming through here too. Do you teach any courses on electrical engines? Yes, in our alternative fuels course, we actually have that. We have uh, propane. We talk about hydrogen. We talk about uh, natural gas. We talk about um, um, compressed natural gas, liquid natural gas systems. We t we talk about them all. We have uh, we have a couple of electric vehicles. We have uh, Nissan Leaf. Um, that we have, and we have some Toyota hybrids, and we have one Honda hybrid, and we actually use them down in the lab for uh, demonstration purposes. Oh, that's great. That good question. As the as the industry is kind of adapting and evolving, that 
you can you know that franchise is going to adapt and evolve right there with it to be at the the leading edge of all this technology. It looks like we'll give it a, just a little bit more time here for any other questions. Um, but Eric, I'd like to thank you for your time and your presentation, and thank everybody for attending this uh, our first uh, virtual open house. Um, hopefully, we can get back into Zed Building for you to see all of the cool facilities and and everything there. But in the meantime, at least we have this virtual platform that can convey this information. Absolutely. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Eric. We're gonna we're gonna end the webinar there. Uh, appreciate everybody for attending, uh, and have yourself a great day. Thanks, guys. Thanks.